Good morning, this is Dr. Hardin, and I'm here this morning, earlier. Normally, I don't uh, have moments of inspiration until uh, 10 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific Coast time. But today, uh, I'm starting uh, at about 45 minutes earlier. Uh, I have a funeral to attend, and I apologize if this is an inconvenient to some of you, <clears throat> but I want to thank God for you that's going to tune in. I want to thank God, God to, for you, Sister Shannon, uh, for tuning in. And we, uh, today, uh, you know, I want to thank God. Let me have a word of prayer, and then I'm going to get into what I want to get into. Father, I thank you for these that's going to join us today for moments of inspiration. I thank you, God, that you have a word for them that's going to inspire them, enhance them, and give them the power to make it through this day and other days. And I pray, God, for those that are sick, those that have loved ones, those that are struggling in the hospital, God, now with the COVID virus and with the cancer, with diabetes, with strokes and many other things, migraine headaches and accidents and gunshot wounds and kidney stones, etc. Whatever it is, God, you are a healer. And we pray, God, right now that your word will heal them. You are everywhere. You feel, you feel, you feel the universe and your power and your word, God, is a, more than enough to heal, more than enough to lift grief, no more than enough, God, to pull down stronghold and to break every yoke. Now, Father, we ask that you will use your power for just a few minutes to give me that anointing that somebody would be inspired, enhanced, and enlightened. And I give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. <clears throat> God bless you this morning, Sister Philip. Thank God for you that uh, tuned in. As I said earlier, is that I tuned in earlier this morning. Uh, thank you, Sister Miller. Uh, I, earlier today, I normally don't start moments of inspiration until 10 a.m., and I apologize for that, uh, but I have a funeral to uh, officiate at 11 a.m. Uh, today. But what I want to do, first of all, I just want to give God thanks. We saw something happen yesterday uh, that had not happened in our favor and came out so greatly in our favor, then we just can't say we ever have, have seen it like that before. And I want to thank God for this because here's what happened. You had sinners, sinners, people that don't know God, praising God yesterday for victory, crying in the street, shouting. And they talk about us shouting in, in the church, but they were shouting in the street. And they had a right to be glad, not for what had happened. They weren't shouting about that. What they were glad about is that for the time, for time and time again, we've seen these things for years and years and years and so now that they have cameras and they try to deny the cameras say well that you don't you didn't it had, didn't happen the way you seen it and da 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 but when the uh, prosecutor said what you saw is what happened don't allow anybody to tell you that what you saw didn't happen this is not a this was not a trick of a magician this was uh, the absolute doing of a man. And so we, the people shouted for and Floyd, uh, shouted for George Floyd uh, being uh, not killed, but being freed. At least the person that did it is going to have an opportunity to reap what they sowed. So they shouted it, and not only doing that, that stopped a lot of, 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 of rioting. That was, they was preparing for the riot. They were preparing for people to tear up the stores and tear up the community and fires and everything. But thank God it didn't happen that way, and maybe they were not prepared for the shouting and the praising of God and the crying that people did. And I'll be honest and tell the truth that I shed tears. I shed some tears. They were tears of joy because that's what we haven't seen in so long. So today, I want to help you and, and, and that are watching and you that's going to tune in and you that's going to see this at a later time. I'm just going to uh, read from Psalms 34. If you have your Bibles, your phone, or I know you have your phone or your iPad, so maybe you want to use your, Bi use your Bible. Uh, the 34th chapter of Psalm. And this is a great, great book, uh, this chapter. It talks about 
praising God for deliverance. So if you have something that God have delivered you from, something that God have set you free from, and I know he, all of us, I don't care who you are, if you are in your teens or you are even in your, 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 your youthful years, if you're under that, you're not a teenager, but, but if you just, God have did something for you to praise him for. That's right, to praise him for. And so David said, and this was when David had left uh, Israel because Saul, Saul, because Saul was pursuing him to kill him because Saul didn't want him to be king. And he was hunting for David day and night. David had to go from one side of the mountain to the other one. And so finally David went to, uh, uh, he went to, it played like he was insane and went to Abimelech, another king of the Philistine, went there and he went there with foaming at the mouth like he was crazy. And in that time, they didn't, they didn't kill uh, insane people. And so they said, this is David. So he sent him away. So now David come to his real sense and say, I'm, I can't be faking all of this stuff now. And I'm tired of this faking. And verse one of chapter 34, he said, I will, I will bless the Lord at all times. Now, when you say that, if you say I'm going to bless God at all times, you don't really realize what you are saying. If you say I'm going to bless God at all times, that means I'm going to bless God at when I'm sad. I'm going to bless God when I'm up. I'm going to bless God when I'm poor, don't have money to pay my bills. I'm going to bless God when folks criticize me. I'm going to bless God when I'm lied on. I'm going to bless God when I'm persecuted. So if you said, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, that's what you're saying. And so David said, I'm going to bless him at all times. Well, Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. So that's, those are the things. He said, all my appointed time, I'm going to wait until my change come. So David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And look what he has said. Con and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, that's another thing. Think about this. We're doing this like uh, 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 exegesis, uh, uh, what we want to call exegesis. We're extrapolating what these things are saying. He said, I will bless the Lord at all time. Now, that means, again, if you're going to bless God at all time and his praises shall continue to be in your mouth, that means if somebody curse you out, you're going to still, you're, it's not going to have you to rebel back with something, uh, uh, profanity, uh, other than you said, I will bless the Lord at all time and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. So what you're saying, I'm going to praise him when I'm up. I'm going to praise him when I'm down. Or the same thing is, is saying that I will continually, uh, it's it going to continually be in my mouth. Now he said, not only is this just going to be in my mouth. Verse 2 said, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Now, that means your inner man, your inner man, your will, your, your, your conscience is going to continually boast in the Lord. And, humble, and the humble shall hear there are and be glad. So people will see, say, oh, God, they mistreated her. Oh, God, they mistreated him. They said these things to him. But he didn't change. He kept praising God. He kept a smile on his face. And she kept smiling. She kept saying, I love you. I'm going to pray for you. That's what David was saying. He said that, that the Lord, that the, he shall humble hear, the humble shall hear of it and be glad. And that's what we know we're growing when other folks speak well of your character. To. And they're not just saying that. And so David said, since I'm going to do that, in verse 3, he said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. I want you to lift him up. Lift up God with me and let us lift up his name together. Let's exalt him together. Now, yesterday, throughout the United States of America and some country, they were praising God together. What were they praising him for? They were praising him for a verdict of guilty, guilty, guilty. Now, the guilty person wasn't praising him. He wasn't praising him, but uh, he was reaping what he sowed, what he sowed. And this was not to, to, when a person can do that to any human being and don't feel anything, you have to know, you have to know, you have to know, God, hallelujah, thank you, Sister Philip. You have to know that they, they did something like this before. 
They did this before. And so uh, it has created a habit. And this habit of being uh, rough and, 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 and hurting folks, it, it didn't have no, his conscience had callous, have just been sealed off from that. And so he didn't feel anything. You could look at his expression, just looking around with his hand in his pocket, that he was comfortable in hurting folk. And now he will see what it means to be mistreated. Now he probably, you know, they, they got him in isolation now because they can't put him in the regular population because he wouldn't last that long. That's right, he wouldn't last that long. So he can't go in the regular population. But David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Every channel that you went on, every city that you saw, that, that they was in, you saw that they was praising God. They was magnifying. They was happy. Some crying, grown people crying. They weren't ashamed of being crying because they, they, they was exalting what they had seen and heard together. And then he said, I sought the Lord. David said, I sought the Lord. And he heard me, this verse 4, and delivered me from all my fears. Now, what is fear? Well, fear is, is a terror. Uh, fear is a hole in something inside. It's a strong rage. Thank you, uh, Brother Kevin, will you? It's a strong rage. And David said, he delivered me from all of my fear, fear. Now, we can't say that. I can't say it. You may can say it. But there are still some things that I am tense about. That I, 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 well, I'm cap If I see a big crowd of certain people and they got on certain clothes, things tied around their head, and, 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 and pants his hand off of them, uh, off of their behind, and, and they are all gathered on, on the sidewalk, what I'm walking on. I don't mind going across to the other side of the street to pass them by. I really don't mind that because I know that there may be some trouble. So these are fears that we have. But David said, he delivered me from all of my fears. Now that's a, that's a, that's a blessing. That's a blessing if you are delivered from all of your fears and there's nothing that you fear uh, and, and, and nothing that you that causes you to be tense, tense, nothing that causes you to be stressed, nothing that causes you to be apprehensive. That's a great blessing. That's a great blessing. And this is what I'm telling you, praising God for deliverance, praising God. God for delivered. And David said, he delivered me from all of my fear. Then he said that they looked unto him. Verse 5, they looked unto him, and I'm in Psalm 34. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their face were not ashamed. In other words, yesterday, I don't believe there was anybody that was ashamed for rejoicing and being thankful for what they had heard and seen. They, was, they wasn't ashamed. They was crying. They was hugging each other. They was jumping up. They were doing all of these things. And then David called himself this because he was poor in spirit at that time. So he said, verse 6, that this poor man cried. I cried, I cried, I cried. Lord, why is Saul following me? Why do Saul want to kill me? What have I done to him? I cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his trouble. He put himself in a third-person position. I, that, I, this man, poor man, cried, and he heard him and delivered him from all of his trouble. Now, is there anybody that's watching me this morning, anybody that's going to watch me at a later time, can say that you are delivered from all of your trouble. You don't have no trouble. No more trouble coming. No more in the future. No more in the past. All the past you have, but you don't have no more in the future. He delivered you from all of your trouble. And you are glad that God delivered you from all of your trouble. My God. And then he said, I got why? I have protection. Verse 7 said, the angels of the Lord encamp round and about them that fears him and delivered them. Now think about this. The angels of the God. God got his angels involved in David's trouble. He said the angels of the Lord in camp. They build their houses around him. They, that means that they were with them present day and night. That's, that's what he said. Though, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. God has been with us and he's still with us. God has brought us through whether you got it, you came out of it, and whether you didn't get it, he protected you from it. Whether you was, had heart attack, whether you had a stroke, or whether you had diabetes or whatever you had, or maybe you got your arm broke or your leg broke or got hit by a car or lied on or whatever, he delivered you out of it, my God. He delivered you out of your fear. And my God, we have something to be thankful for God for. And that's why we can praise God for his deliverance, for the thing that he's done for us. And David said, if you don't believe it, if I can just give it to you and make a recipe out of it. Notice what he said in verse 8, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And blessed the man that trusted in him. Now, I, I heard, I read a, 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 a story 
about the new neo theology. Neo theology means new theology, where that there was a young man that was uh, uh, start teaching about that you don't there there is no Christ, there is no Jesus, there is no Savior, there is no God, and he called a conference and with with the elders and pastors to tell them about and show them that it wasn't no God, and he paid for their breakfast and paid for their lunch, and he was talking and doing, and then during the lunch time, one old pastor got up and he said, "Hey, young man," he said, "Can I have a word?" And he said, "Go ahead, speak." And he said, he took an apple and he bought, bit off of the apple. It was a green apple. And he said, I want you to, I want to ask you a question. He said, what is the question? He said, is this apple sour or is it sweet? And the young man said, I don't know. I'd have to taste it. He said, well, that's why I can't believe you because you haven't never tasted God. He said, oh, taste and see that he's good. And if you ever taste God and get a touch of God, you'll know that God is good. And you'll know what flavor he is. And you know what God mercy is. You'll know what God kindness is. And you know what God is doing. And so the young man didn't understand that. Oh, taste and see. And that's what David said. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. You need to put your confidence in God. They, you, this thing may not be over, but you put your confidence in God. It may be something else, but put your confidence in God. You may not be able to stand all the time, but put your confidence in God. Though he slay me, Job said, yet will I trust in him. And the Bible said, when the devil come in like a flood, the spirit of God himself would lift up the standard against him. You know why God would do that? Uh, you know why God would do that? Simply because uh, uh, that you can't, if a flood come in, nobody can handle a flood. They need dams to handle floods where the water can overflow in it. But he said, if the devil decide to come in like a flood, I will lift up a standard against him. I'll stop him for it. And those seven fall, there are a thousand fall on one side and 10,000 on the other. I will not let none come nigh thee. That's right. And my God, we got something to praise God for. And that's why I said praising God for his deliverance. Praise him for his deliverance. Now, verse 9 said, Oh, fear the Lord, ye saints, for there is no wants to them that fear him. There's no wants to them that fear him. If you respect God and you, you, you respect him enough to obey him, if you love me, you will keep my commandment. Then there is no fear. Perfect love cast out fear. And my God, he said, the young lion do lack and suffer hunger, for they seek the Lord, for they that seek the Lord should not want for any good thing. Now, what he was saying is that the lions have to get find things that they got to prey on to get their food. Sometimes the lion can't find animals that they can destroy to get their food. So they suffer hunger. They suffer hunger. And when they catch a, a beast and get their meal, they have to try to eat enough to last sometimes three or four weeks. But my God, he said, but they, they suffer hunger. But they that waits and seek God will not want for any good thing. Now think about that. There's a lot of bad things folk want for, but we won't even want for good things. God will bless us and he's already a blessed us. So note what verse 11 said, come ye children. Listen what it said, come ye children uh, uh, and hearken. I mean, listen unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. David said, now, if you just listen to me, I've been through. I've been through the lions. I've been through the bear. I've been through the, 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 the Goliath. I've been through the Saul. I, I got a testimony because I've been through. And, and, and if you haven't been through anything, you don't have a testimony. You may be talk about what somebody else done. But I wonder, is it anything in your mind now that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that God brought you through it? If you know that, you ought to give God some praise right right where you are, that he brought you through it. He brought you through some fearful thing. He brought you through some things that, that took have taken your life. He brought you through some things that you didn't know that you could go through. He brought you through some stuff that other folks then then they, they looked at you and they don't know how you made it. And you can say, my soul look back and wonder, how did I get over this? How did I get out of this? How did God bring me through? How did God lift that heavy burden? How did God pull down that stronghold? That thing that had me wondering all night, how did God do it? But my soul look back and wonder, how I got over. That's right, how I got over. And I need you all to post this because somebody need this this morning. Somebody need to know that they need to be praising God for his deliverance. That's right, they need to be praising him for his deliverance. And then David said in verse 12, what man is he that desires life 
and love many days that he may see good. Everybody deserves that want to know about that, Sister Dale. Everybody wants to know that, that, that God is who he say he is. Everybody want to have a good life. Everybody wants to be loved, and, and they want to see good days. You know, sometimes you have some good days, and sometimes it's some bad day. But don't worry about your bad day because your good days outweigh your bad day. That's right. See, here's the thing you got to look at. I preached it uh, two years ago, and I, I did a 14-tape series, CD series on uh, expecting the unexpected blessing. Expecting the unexpected blessing. And unexpected is something that you don't even think is going to happen. But you, it, and it happened, and you was not expecting it. You weren't expecting certain folks to do things for you, but they did. You were not expecting certain folks to come by and, 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 and give you some prey, but they did. You weren't expecting God to bless you with a new car, but he did. You was not expecting God to save your son uh, and so forth. You thought they was too far gone, but he did. That's right, Sister, sister uh, 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 McIntyre. He did. And there's some things unexpected. Now, think about this. During this pandemic, some churches went out of business altogether. They just they folded up and some have not recuperated and some are still going through, but there was others got unexpected blessing. God did more for them in, the, in this pandemic than he did for them when they was coming all the time. So don't tell me what God will not do. Unexpected God taught, touched people's heart to send money. God touched people's heart to give you a phone call. God touched people's heart to tell you you're going to make it. God didn't let you get this virus, even though you was all around, and nurses, doctors, lawyers, judges, teachers, preachers, pastors, all around it, but God blessed you not to get it. Then you did something that did get it, and he pulled them through. He pulled more through. Now, God, did you have to understand? More people are still living and died. In the United States, they said over oh, well, half a million, and we got 300 million that still made it. Do you understand that? And they said in the whole world, three million practically three million died, but we got uh, billions living. So don't, don't drop your head and say, God is not doing anything for me. God is doing something for you. You have a right to praise God. You ought to praise God for his deliverance. Praise him for what he, how he kept your children. Your children, if you got teenagers' children or in their 20, you don't know where they've been. You don't know what, who they've been around. You don't know whether they kept their masks on. You don't know whether they even put them on or not. You know, all of these things. Then they came back around you. But I wanted to tell you something. You made it. Now, let me tell you something. What man is, this, this is what David said, what man is he that desires life and love many days that he may see good? Keep the keep thou tongue from evil and thou lips from speaking God. Be careful what you say because words are images and images become developed into life say, life thing. The Bible said that's one of the most powerful things in your body and destructive thing is the tongue. So be careful what you say because with the tongue you can kill and with the tongue you can heal. With the tongue you can tear down and with the tongue you can build up. My God, you can build yourself up with your tongue. You can tear yourself down with your tongue. You can say nobody's never going to help me. Nobody, um, nobody never going to give me nothing. I never have this. I'll never get this and I'll never get this. You said it, so why are you expecting something different? But yet you shouldn't take your same tongue and say, I am blessed. I'm blessed above thousands. I'm blessed above hundreds. I'm blessed above millions. I'm going to make it. Today is a day that God has made and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in that the same tongue that you said you wasn't going to make it. If you said that you're going to make it and when you say it enough until you believe it, your faith rises to what you say, then that's when God do it. God don't just give you stuff. He don't give you stuff that just, just simply because you ask for it. God gives us what we qualify for. We When we qualify in our life for it, when we qualify with praises, when we qualify with joy, my God, that's when God open doors for us. That's when God make a ways for us. When we when when what we say, our life re rises up to what we say. That's what a blessing is that. It's, you don't get what you say simply because you say it. But when your faith is down and you say it until it rises up to what you believe and you know that you know that you know that God, what God said is going to come to pass, then God will bring it to pass and show you that I'm my word. I watch it over my word and, and I, got, I God's my word that my word will go to wherever I send it. And when people get to the place where they, 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 they joy and they happiness and they, they trust in God. God's word will bring joy. God's word will bring peace. And God's word will rise to the level of your faith. Now, let me get this word in. Keep thy tongue from evil and the lip from speaking God. And verse 14 said, depart from evil. That means we got to get away from evil and do good, seek peace, and pursue it. You got to go after peace. Follow peace with all men. And, 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 and you follow with all men. That's right. Follow peace. Don't follow the bad stuff, but follow peace with all men. And God will bless you. And verse uh, 15 said, the eye 
eyes of the Lord upon the, is upon the righteous, and his ears are open to, unto their cry. Don't ever think God has forsaken you. God's eyes is on you. And God said, he, he's in every place beholding the good and the evil. So he sees the evil we do. And when we do evil or do wrong, just repent. Don't cry to argue with God about you was better than somebody else and you did this because that person did that. Forget what they did. But Lord, I've sinned and I've come short of the glory of God. Because let me tell you something. When you tell God, God, I've lied, you think God is excited and said, oh, I didn't know that. No, he knew you were going to lie before you did it. Before you was born, he knew you were going to lie. And he knew the day and time that you were going to lie. He knew why you lie. And so the eyes of the Lord is in every place and he's looking at the good and the evil. But let me tell you something. I'm getting ready to close here. The righteous cries and the Lord hear it and deliver them out of all of their trouble. That Lord is high, is nigh unto him that are of a broken heart and saveth his such as of contrite spirit. God save people in the time of trouble. And last of all, many of the affliction. This is verse 18, uh, verse 19. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Now, let me, that, there is something about that conjunction, but there, but, you know, I would have been dead, but the Lord kept, the Lord delivered me. I would have been broke and couldn't pay my bills, but the Lord provided money for me. I would have died in sickness, in the heart attack I had, in the stroke I had, or in the cancer I had, but the Lord, though that conjunction, but but the Lord, that means you join in God, but the Lord brought me through it. I, I would have been dead and that did some things that, 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 that deserved for somebody to hurt me, but God came in. But, 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 think about the buts in your life. Think about that conjunction that God picked you up and God brought you through it and God saw you through it. But if the Lord, but if the Lord had not been on my side, where would I be? But if the Lord had not delivered me, where would I be? But if the Lord Lord hadn't came in, what would have happened to me? But, 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 my God, thank God for the buts. Oh, yes, thank God for every but. Because let me tell you something. God is good, and he's good all the time. And I want to tell you today, we have something to be praising God for. And if, like yesterday, as the people was praising God and others, and along with myself, praising God, thanking God for what he, he, he did for George uh, Floyd, I praise God for that. And I praise God, and we're saying that this is a beginning. It, it's not, don't think it's over. This is just a beginning. And maybe somebody would take a precedent from that and say, we got to start looking at things right now. We got to start looking at things through different eyes. We can't look through things just through our color glasses. We got to see the truth and the truth is what makes us free. Thank you so much for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration and to you that was waiting for me at 10. When you see this on delayed time, I want you to know that it's just as fresh now as it is when it would be just as fresh then as it is now. So I want to thank God and I want to pray for you. God, I pray that you send deliverance everywhere. Those that are bound, those that are hurting, those that are sick, those that are suffering, those that have been in character then. Those that have been wounded in their heart. They've been hurt by words. They've been hurt by men. Been hurt by relatives. Pick them up, God. Let them know, God, they have something to still to praise you for. Let them know that you are present help in the time of trouble. Let them know that they can make it and no weapon formed against them is going to prosper. Let them praise you, God, in their hurt. Let them praise you, God, for sparing your life, their life. Let them praise you, God, that they you made it through. Let them praise you, God, for this is the day you made and they are rejoiced and still is able to rejoice choice and be glad in it, Sister Chamber. I just want to praise God for all of you, Sister Vanessa, all of you that are tuned in this morning, all of you that are helping me to share, to share God's word, my God, to share this with somebody else, praising God for his deliverance. I have a lot to praise God for. My God, I couldn't tell it all in a day. I can tell it all in a year. When I look back from 20, from, from, from serving God for about 56 years, my look back and see where God had brought me from, nobody told me that the, 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 the road was going to be easy. Nobody told me that thing was going to happen, but I don't believe that God brought me this far to lead me now. And I just want to give you a word of prophecy that the Lord put in my spirit for you today. Your, 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 your best days are yet be ahead of you and forgetting those things of the past and pressing on towards the, the, the future, pressing on towards the mark of the high calling in God. And there's a mark that God wants you to come to and you haven't made it yet, but on your way, joy going to be there. On your way, 
blessing going to be there. On your way, Dr. Bocape, okay, but on your way, God is going to bless you. And so don't worry about where you've been, but where you are. Think about where God has taken you. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. God is not through with you yet. God got to, it's not in the strip yet. That's why we're still here. He didn't write it in the strip that we will be gone on, on, the, uh, on this day. So therefore we are here. And so my God, we still have something to praise God for. And I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise that shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, bless the Lord with me. And God, I pray that you bless them, that they best they heal them, God. Heal their mind, heal their children. Bring them in, save them, God, from this untold generation. Save that man, oh God, that don't know you. Let him tell Jesus to forgive him for his sin. Forgive him for their sin and to come into their heart and save them from this untold generation. And then God, find a, lead them to a church and guide them to a ministry that is teaching your word and fill them with the back baptism of the Holy Ghost. Those that are suffering from finance, bless them, God. Pay that bill. Let them know they're not going to be evicted. Let them know they're not going to lose their house in foreclosure. Bring it out, God. Open doors for them. Make ways for them. Lift their minds and lift every burden. And look at our system, God. Our, our police officers, God, bless them. Oh, God. And let those, oh, God, that are doing the wrong thing, God, change their heart. And now, God, let them be more cognitive of what's going on, God. And let them know that the eyes are on them and your eyes have been on them for a long time. And then, God, our governor officials, our bishops, and our elders, our ministers, our missionaries, our families, remember them, God. And we give you glory, God. Those that are sick, those that are in the hospital, those that got disease, bless them, God. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen and amen. Listen, I appreciate you being here this morning uh, with me in moments of inspiration. And as the, if you get an opportunity and God put it in your heart, I would certainly like you to, uh, to plant a seed and moments of inspiration. You can do that simply by going to uh, uh, Push Pay. If it's on, you already should be on the, on the stream, Push Pay. And not only Push Pay, Give a Fi. And not only Give a Fi, you can mail it in at 135 West Victoria Street here in the city of Long Beach, California. 135 West Victoria Street here in the city of Long Beach, California. 90805. Or you can do like some do that are in the area. They drop it off. They drop it off from uh, 10 until 5. Someone is here. And if no one is here, you can drop it through the mail slot in an envelope and it's saved. And I want to thank God for you, all of you. And I want you to know that if the Lord said the same, I will be back next Wednesday at, on a given time at 10 a.m. with some more moments of inspiration. No moments of frustration. I'm not coming on here to frustrate you, but I'm coming on here to bless you, to bless myself, and to let you know that you can make it. Regardless of what anybody say, you can make it. And you're going to make it. My God, you're going to make it because if God be for you, who can be against you? God bless you. Have a blessed day. Dr. Hardin.